D menu is the only suckless application I still actively use. So I still do have things like ST installed just on the off chance that Alacrity happens to break and I need some sort of backup terminal. It's always good to have something there. And I have XBanish installed, but XBanish isn't actually developed by the Suckless team. It's just one of the Suckless recommended applications. So I don't think that one really counts. So what I want to talk about today was why I keep using DMenu and why when people are looking for a launcher, I still recommend it to them. Because yes, Rofi is an amazing application as well, but I really like what DMenu does. One of the concerns that most people have with Suckless applications is the patching, but Unlike things like ST and DWM, you don't actually need to go and patch it. And I didn't actually bother installing a single patch, probably for maybe six or so months. If you just install DMenu from your standard repos, it's going to work basically as well as you'd expect it to work. Now, that doesn't mean I don't have any patches installed. I do have a couple, so I've got a patch for my theme if anyone wants to use it. But as for the ones that are available on the Suckless website, we have Highlight, instant line height and numbers. I'll explain what these do in just a moment, but most of these are just aesthetic patches. The only one that really does anything functional is instant. Basically what this one does is if you only have one thing in D menu, it's automatically going to close it out rather than keeping it there and then making you select it. If there's one thing in the D menu, why not just select it by default? So here's just one of my random D menu scripts. Now, unless you've used D menu extensively, you're probably not going to notice what line height is actually doing. So if I go and close this now, as you're going to notice, it's the exact same height as my poly bar. Basically, line height lets you modify the height of your D menu window. So out of the box, D menu bases its height based on the font size that you have. But with the font size that I'm using, the gap it had was a bit too small, and I could actually see my poly bar behind my D menu window. Now, some people might not really be bothered by that, but personally, I wanted them to line up perfectly. And there's no way to do that with stock D menu. Now, numbers, what that one does, it shows this little number off to the right hand side here. Basically, it shows me how many elements are actually in my D menu prompt right now. And if I go and search for something, like let's say we search for Linux, as we can see, it shows us how many results are being shown on the screen right now. And you can also probably notice what Highlight is doing as well. So right now I'm searching for the term LI. And what Highlight does is basically highlights that in all of the matches that it's showing in D menu. So in this case, the LI in LibrePay at the start, LI in LibGen at the start, the LI in 9 to 5 Linux. Basically, it's just an aesthetic patch. Now, unlike something like DWM and ST, because DMenu is so functional out of the box and does pretty much everything you're going to want to launch it to do, most of the patches you see are going to be aesthetic patches. So they're going to be things like changing some highlighting, changing the theme, things like that. But this doesn't mean that every single one of the patches is going to be like that. So three ones I found in particular were high priority, and I'll show you the rest in just a moment. So high priority, what this does is lets you, I guess, modify the order of your text inside a D menu as you're actually searching for stuff. So let's say that you want to have Chromium, Firefox, alacrity and things like that be more important than random other packages you have on your system. What you can do is go and add these into this high priority list and then if you start searching for say CHRO, instead of showing things like Chrome driver or various other things that might match on the same term, it's going to put Chromium at the front. So basically you can open up the applications you care about in a much quicker way. I'm not running this one myself, but I might have to go and try it out. The next one I want to talk about is the fuzzy match. So basically, it does what it says. It adds fuzzy finding into D menu. So by default, it does a fixed string search, which is fine for most situations. If you're trying to search for, say, an application name or a bookmark name or a config name, things like that, fixed string searching is probably going to be fine. But there are going to be use cases where you do want to have fuzzy matching, and then this one is one you can use. Now, Along with the fuzzy match, there is also a highlight that works with the fuzzy match as well. So if you want to use highlight, I'd recommend using that one as well. And the last one I want to mention is incremental output, which isn't something that I can really see a use case for, at least on my system, but is actually a really cool idea. So what it does is as you type in D menu, whatever the text currently in D menu is, that's what's going to be output every single time you press another key. So what this could be used for is doing incremental search in something like Surf. Now, I don't run Surf on my system, but that browser is incredibly minimal, and it kind of relies on these extra applications to do basic features like that. 
Now, when I'm reinstalling Arch, sometimes I get really lazy during my installation process, and I'll go and install the base version of D-Menu, just because I want to get my system rolling, I want to start running stuff, and then afterwards I'll go and replace it with my own version. Now, the nice thing about the base version of D-Menu is, it looks perfectly fine. It's already running a dark theme, it looks very simple, but it looks... It looks fine, I don't really have anything negative to say about it. If you go and compare that to something like Rofi though, Rofi, if you put the time into it, or you go and run a theme that's already got it configured, it can look absolutely amazing. I am always impressed by the sort of stuff that people can do with Rofi. But, out of the box, it might be one of the ugliest looking applications I have ever seen. It is this light browny beige color. It doesn't fit into any theme unless you've also got a really ugly theme for the rest of your system. D-Menu though being fairly neutral, unless you're running a light theme, already fits into most themes. For me, the most critical thing about a launcher, I don't care if it has fancy icons or fancy colors, all of that stuff can be really cool and can make the launcher look way better. But... If it doesn't meet this criteria, I just cannot use the launcher. And that is, I need my launcher to be absolutely lightning fast. I don't want there to be any delay when I try to do anything. So if I go and launch up D-Menu, so 3, 2, 1, it's already open. D-Menu does this exactly as well as I want it to do. Now, there are only 3,700 items in this list, but if we go and search for something, as we can see, as I'm typing, it automatically updates it. So... It might break if maybe I have a million items, but I'm never realistically going to be sorting through a list that has that many items in it. And what I've seen is that some GUI launchers actually do start to slow down if you do have too many applications installed. Now, I think this system has the most packages installed that I've ever had. I know there's too many things there, I should go and deal with it. But even with this many packages, it doesn't care whatsoever, and it would just absolutely chew through them. Now, because I use D-Menu for more than just launching up my applications, I don't want to have to have some sort of special input to work with D-Menu. So, in the case of D-Menu, if I want to actually go and feed some data into it, so, say, for example, all of my bookmarks, what it accepts is a new line separated list. And this is exactly what I needed it to do. And the reason why that's good is because both Rofi and FZF support new lines separated out of the box. So I don't need to go and set some special options to make it work in those applications. If I want to go and use Rofi instead of D-Menu, all I do is just install Rofi, change the calls in my scripts, and it just works exactly as I'd expect. Or maybe I want to start doing everything in my terminal. In that case, I can just go and replace the calls with FCF, and it'll work exactly the same. So in case you're curious, some of the scripts I've got, I want to open up my bookmarks here. I've also got basically the same thing, but this time for my configs. And then one on Super X, which basically lets me switch between my different monitor configurations. I think I've got a couple of others, but they're not really that important. So, if I wanted to switch over to Rofi, there would be no problem switching these over. Now, speaking of scripts and Rofi, when you go and install that application, it comes with more than just an application launcher. So, I think you can do things like select a specific window to focus on. You might be able to even do things like switch between your different desktops. Now... All of these sound like really cool features. I don't use them on my system because I haven't actually bothered to implement them with D-Menu. But if I did want to use them, I'd want to go and implement them myself just so I can have them working exactly the way I want them to work. It is cool that you do get a basic implementation inside of Rofi. And for most people, those probably are going to be fine. But I'd want to tweak it exactly the way I want it to work. Now, none of this is to say that you shouldn't be using Rofi. I know the people who are in love with that application aren't going to want to switch to anything else, especially to D-Menu, especially if they're running some crazy custom theme. But if you're, say, switching from a desktop environment, or you are looking for a new launcher to try out, I'd recommend trying out D-Menu, and then if you want to do some extra stuff after that, maybe then try out Rofi. But most people are probably going to be fine just running D-Menu. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about this. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to... Chris, Joachim, Donald, Kubinian, Andre, Nathan, Monster, Chica, Bento, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, the Road, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 patrons. If you want to go and support, I work them links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, style, leave a pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, which is Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on BitChute, Odyssey, and Library, if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.